So you probably clicked on this video because you're getting into outline cheaters and soft outlines sound like an interesting topic. Or you read this article by Tom Lumen and are desperately trying to find out how to fix the X3004 error. And or you scrolled down to the comment section hoping someone posted a fix where you found this comment and got a new error. So you gave up. Well, you came to the right place because I'm going to be going over a fix and explain to the best of my abilities a bit about how it works. So hopefully if there's any changes to Unreal Engine in the future, you'll have a better idea about what sections of the HLSL code you'll need to change to make the shader work again. So let's start by setting up the code from Tom Lumen and getting that X3004 error. Then to fix it, we'll be changing these two lines of code with the scene texture lookup function, which I came across in this article. And that results in the one fourth of the screen covering problem that the comment from earlier mentioned. So it's reassuring we're getting the same outcome that everyone else was getting. However, to fix the one fourth of the screen covering problem, we're going to use the view buffer UV to buffer UV function instead, which Unfortunately, I can't remember the article it's from. So I'm going to try my best to explain what I believe the viewport to buffer function is doing. Let's say the viewport's top left pixel begins at 500x and 200y. It would then be pointed or mapped to 00 of the image buffer. And another example, the bottom rightmost pixel of the viewport would be mapped to the resolution of your monitor. So for a 1920 by 1080 resolution, the bottom rightmost pixel would be mapped to 1920x and 1080y, which we can see the effect fixes itself when full screening the viewport. But with that, we are close to the end. Now, I kept the value 14 from the suggested fix. However, there's no indication as to what 14 represents or why we're using it. If we look back at the custom shaders tutorial, it actually tells us what the 14 represents, and that's the scene texture or buffer index, which the 14th buffer is the first post process input buffer. Note I'm using buffer because it's a generic term used in graphics, whereas Unreal calls it a scene texture. It doesn't really matter so long as I don't confuse you when switching between the two. Also, the first post-process input buffer is the generated image after Unreal applies all the lighting, shadows, and coloring. So it's the image you would see if no post-processing had occurred. But now knowing what buffer 14 represents, we know the tutorial was working with the custom depth, which happens to be buffer 13. However, after changing the value, we can still see it doesn't work. So let's try the custom stencil before brute forcing every other buffer index. And though it says the custom stencil buffer is 24 in the custom shaders tutorial, the buffer locations have changed in 4.27. The buffer index we are after is 25, which we can find by clicking the window menu, then hovering over the shader section and clicking HLSL code. You should then see the buffer indices when scrolling down just a little. Before moving on, I want to note that you're also able to write PPI underscore custom stencil instead of 25. And that way, if the buffer indices change again, you won't need to update 25 to a different value. However, the code could still break if they rename the enum ppi underscore custom stencil to something else. But in the case that happens, you'll be able to open the shader code through the window menu like previously mentioned, so long as the shader was successfully compiled and update your code with the correct enum. However, that brings us to the intended outcome, which if you followed along, thank you. And if you just skip to this section, the code is on the screen and linked in the description. But before moving on to the addition for fixing the drop in quality as you move away from the subject, I want to say that I believe you could still use the custom depth buffer instead of the custom stencil, but I'm not going to attempt it. Okay, moving on. To fix the drop in quality from the duplicate stencil separating the further we get, we're going to scale the stencil's offset distance. In other words, the thickness of the outlines will stay the same regardless of the distance from the subject. So first we're going to make a float2 variable named texel size that is equal to view.view size and inverse size.zw multiplied by distance. I believe texel is short for texture pixel, and in all of the outline shader tutorials I've read, it seems to be what everyone uses for the variable name. But I believe it's how much of the screen the texture pixel takes up. 
So in the case of a 1920 by 1080 resolution, the texel size would be 1 divided by 1920 for the x value and 1 divided by 1080 for the y value, which are stored in the z and w values respectively of the view size and inverse size variable. Meaning the multiplication by the distance has nothing to do with what a texel is, but it's really so we don't have to multiply the z and w components separately. However, multiplying them separately with different values will give you varying outline thicknesses depending on the screen axis. So maybe a better term for the variable would be thickness instead of texel size. But that would also be a bit misleading as we're going to use the variable to offset the stencil buffer when determining if a particular pixel is part of the outline or not. So maybe stencil offset would be a better name. Second, we'll multiply the output of the current offsets cosine and sine functions by it. So current offset dot x is cosine function by texel size dot r or texel size dot x. It's the same value with two different ways of referencing. Then multiply the current offset dot y sine function by texel size dot g or texel size dot y. After compiling, you should no longer see the outline itself, and to fix this, go into the material instance and change the distance variable from 0.01 to a bigger value such as 1 or 2, and the outline should appear again. And like how I said earlier that the texel size variable name would probably be better off as offset, well, distance might be more understandable as outline thickness. However, now the outline scales with the distance from the subject, at least at low thicknesses. At higher thicknesses, you'll need to increase the radial and distance steps, but note this also comes at a higher performance cost, so be careful. And with that, the shader looks like the original at all distances, though I will point out one thing you can't do, which is make the outlines black, as the outline color is being added to the pixels and black represents zero, so anything plus zero is itself. But let me know if you're interested in an updated version that allows any color outlines as I feel like adding it to this video will add an additional 5-10 to 10 minutes explaining what all is happening and I believe what I've shown is a pretty good starting point in that it might be more beneficial to have you work through how it could be done as a test of your new acquired knowledge. Last before I go I want to quickly touch on one of the cons of the shader that will probably only affect a small number of people which is the inability for it to work on mobile devices. The reason being is the custom depth or custom stencil buffers are not accessible to the scene texture lookup function on mobile. However they are still accessible if you use the scene texture material node evident by following this tutorial and disabling the normal lines part of it as it seems the world normal buffer isn't accessible at all on mobile. Now, that said, it might be possible to pass the custom stencil into the HLSO code from the Steam Texture Material node and have it compiled to work on mobile, but I currently haven't tested that, so yeah, thanks for watching.